By now, you've probably already heard about the updates coming to downtown Disney. It's the State of Disneyland report, as promised by Disneyland President Ken Potrock. Personally, I was on a hosted vacation at the Disneyland Resort over the weekend. Stay tuned to Fresh Bake for some updates on that trip, including our stay at the new Weston Hotel at the Anaheim Convention Center. So I wasn't able to get right to it, but I'm back at the news desk today, and I've got some thoughts on all those updates. Let's get into it. We're going to be talking about the new restaurants coming to downtown Disney, how the new theming of the district and some of the locations already here will be changing, or maybe even leaving. We'll cover the changes coming to the Paradise Pier Hotel, including an interesting new entrance to DCA from Paradise Pier, plus other news included in the announcements, such as the return of Magic Mornings for hotel guests and something called Hey Disney. At least that's what they said it was called, Hey Disney. But we're going to start with the restaurants and Din Tai Fung. I guess this is a popular place, and therefore, it is why, for most people, this is the lead story, Din Tai Fung. This is a restaurant chain known around the world, I guess, for their soup dumplings. And those dumplings are the reason why this is a lead story. I, I mean, personally, I get it. I, I love dumplings. And I also especially love trying new culturally specific things. I love trying new things that come from different cultures. This restaurant is going to be a lot of fun for me personally, I think, and probably for you too. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Din Tai Fung can do at Downtown Disney. Now, one of the interesting things that I heard about this place, though, is that they don't take reservations. At least that's what I've heard from others, and, and I've seen reports of this online as well, but I've also seen online that they do take reservations, so I'm not sure if that's going to be the case or not. If there are no... <laughs> can you imagine... What's that cookie place at Walt Disney World and Disney Springs? It's going to be something like that, but for dumplings. Which, by the way, I heard a rumor that we're going to get that cookie place too. Gideon's, yeah. I, I don't know where I heard, if it's true. But I don't remember where I heard it. But keep an eye out. There, I mean, it makes sense that they're trying to turn downtown Disney into something more like Disney Springs. Anyway, as for Din Tai Fung, where are they going to put it? Uh, what I'm hearing is somewhere near the Lawn Pavilion. Uh, I guess that's this Lawn Pavilion. Do they mean here? Uh, possibly, though I'm doubtful. Uh, my instinct tells me this will be retail. Most likely not here either. I think that's the Star Wars trading post, uh, the Rainforest Cafe, right? If we're you know, using the monorail as a basis for where things are located. And in this concept art, the monorail will be turning left just as it leaves frame on the left side as it heads towards the monorail station with Tortilla Joe's on the other side of that. I mention this because another one of the updates coming to Downtown Disney is that the Uva Bar and Catal Restaurant are no longer going to be the Uva Bar and Catal Restaurant. They are going to be Paseo and Centrico. They are changing the entire menu, which normally right now at Uva Bar and, and, uh, and Catal is like a Mediterranean. It's mostly Mediterranean. They're going to convert that to Mexican. Uh, Centrico, which is going to be, or which was, <laughs> Catal. I'm having a hard time keeping this straight. That's going to be Centrico upscale Mexican cuisine. Uber Bar is going to become Paseo, and they're going to be small plate meals, much like Uber Bar is now. It's not a big restaurant type deal. Small plates. Owned by the same company, so that's why it's not, it's not a new restaurant per se. They're just changing the name and the menu, but it's really the same company. Anyway, getting back to the menu change, why change it to Mexican when you've already got Tortilla Joe's, a Mexican restaurant just down the way? Or is their plan, <laughs> really, seriously, to have two Mexican restaurants basically across the street from one another. And I'm not the only one wondering this because Ken Potrick, Disneyland president, was on the D23 podcast recently, and he was asked directly by, by the host, Tony Morrison. He asked him, does this mean anything for Tortilla Joe's? To which Ken Potrick replied, Yeah, I think Tortilla Joe's continues to do really well for us. And it's a restaurant that's extraordinarily popular. I don't have anything to announce relative to Tortilla Joe's at this point in time. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a yes to me. It sounds like Tortilla Joe's is not going to make it. I mean, if Tortilla Joe's was going to make it, he would have said, said as much, right? His answer was, yes, it means something, without actually saying, yes, it means something. But that's just my opinion. So stay tuned, though, to Fresh Baked, because he said there's going to be more announcements coming in the near future. they got more stuff to call. But we're not done here with this update. It's been confirmed, next, that uh, uh, Earl of Sandwich is getting its third life. Declared dead twice before, Earl's is proving you can't keep a good sandwich down. They're going to be putting up a pop-up Earl's in downtown Disney. Pop-up meaning temporary. 
We mentioned in our last construction video that this could be what they're building out here in the Lilo parking lot, which, by the way, we also kind of called. We thought it might be a pop-up Starbucks, but this would be along those same lines, wouldn't you think? And with this news, I'm going to go ahead and try to call this shot, that Earl's will be a tenant in the eventually completed, a permanent tenant in the eventually completed new downtown Disney. If they're willing to put in a whole bunch of money and time into building a temporary Earl of Sandwich in order to meet whatever demand that Earl of Sandwich still has, and by the way, there is demand because Ken Podrick mentioned that in that same D23 podcast where he said he gets emails all the time about people wanting Earl's back. And if they're willing to do this, build a temporary pop-up Earl of Sandwich to capture some of that still existing demand, then of course they're going to build a permanent one in the eventually completed downtown Disney to capture all of the demand. Or put another way, if they didn't have any plans to be in the Earl of Sandwich business, they wouldn't have bothered to go ahead and build a temporary one. Why build a temporary one if you didn't have a plan to build a permanent one? So once again, stay tuned, because we're going to see that develop here over the next month or two, because I have a feeling it's going to take about that long to finish that thing. It's not near done, but a couple more months from now, we may be seeing that thing turn into a Earl of Sandwich. Now, next, we've got this. This is concept art for a proposed update to Ralph Brennan's Jazz Kitchen. They're going to go from this to this. There was a lot of backlash to this all over social media, <laughs> myself included. I'm not a fan of this art. It doesn't look great. The color choices are weird. It's not, it's, it's not New Orleans. And that's a common sentiment, one that is probably due to the fact that the current jazz kitchen decor does feel like New Orleans. Now, this is a perfectly reasonable discourse to be having about the, the merits of what they're trying to do to Ralph Brennan's jazz kitchen. This is perfectly reasonable. But I will say that I personally have sort of changed my mind about it a little bit. This, after uh, seeing a couple of posts on social media, about why they're doing it. Consider <laughs> this. That's the Rainforest Cafe, and it's one of the most expertly themed restaurants in the history of themed restaurants. It is the granddaddy of them all. It's so good, people went there for years, despite the fact that the food there is terrible. Or was terrible. <laughs> Rainforest Cafe was installed in downtown Disney at the peak of its popularity in 2001. What if people get sick of a specific themed dining experience, which of course is exactly what happened. People got sick of Rainforest Cafe and they started closing them all over the country. Actually, so too did a lot of themed restaurants like this. One that comes to the top of my mind is uh, uh, Planet Hollywood. Those were huge for a minute and then they just as fast they disappeared. ESPN Zone, another themed dining experience, also didn't make it. Now, that building is a lot more, I don't know, plain, generic. It's a box, but the Rainforest Cafe, man, that is, that is one specific building. And now you're stuck with that very specific building that you can put literally nothing else in. I mean, they're trying with the Star Wars trading post. They're trying. But I would guess, I don't know, they're probably using maybe maybe 20% of the total capacity of that building. They've, they've taken over. They've opened up the gift shop again, basically, is all they've done. They've opened up the gift shop. But everything else, the kitchen, the restaurant, anywhere else that exists inside that building is empty. They're using it for as a closet. So I, they can't do anything with that building. I don't even know how to reskin it. You can't even reskin it. They did the, like I said, they, been, they did the best they could with Star Wars Trading Post. But you can't turn that into, you have to come up with a restaurant that fits that existing building for it to make any sense. Now, mind you, the Jazz Kitchen situation does not, it's not a direct equivalency. It's not nearly as, I don't know, difficult to, to reskin that. As a matter of fact, they are reskinning it, as we've seen by uh, the concept art. They, they can reskin it, and they are, but it's considerably easier, more cost-efficient to do that if you were able to build it first in, in such a way that you, it's basically just plug and play. You could take out this sign, take out this thing, and then just pop up pieces in like a Lego set or something like that. So once they do this to, to the Jazz Kitchen, if they ever should get sick of the Jazz Kitchen in the future, it would be that much easier to change the restaurant. And actually, now that I mention it, this is one good argument against the possibility of Tortilla Joe's being turned into Den Tai Fung because Tortilla Joe's building is also pretty specific. It's, it's, it's themed specifically for Tortilla Joe's and not for anything else. It's not quite as severe as the Rainforest Cafe is, but I'll tell you this much, 
you can't just drop Din Tai Fung in that building. They're going to have to do some work to that if they were going to do that, if they're going to change Tortilla Joe's to Din Tai Fung. And we've already seen them going down this road with Downtown Disney for a couple of years now. Take a look at the most recent projects that have gone on. Uh, Splitsville, Ballast Point, uh, Black Tap. So I think I understand why they have to do it like this, and I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. We sometimes take our need to be everything that's related to Disney, and it has to be super mega ultra, super Disney themed. But the reality is, is that Downtown Disney is an outdoor mall, just one that's owned and operated by Disney. But first and foremost, at its core, Downtown Disney is not a theme park, it's an outdoor mall. Having said all of that, eh, the concept art still sucks. I hope they can do better than that. I really do hope they can do better, but I get it. Speaking of theming, something you can do at Downtown Disney is change the theme for the entire district. The, the motif of the whole property as opposed to specific exteriors and interiors of restaurants and shops. You can retheme Downtown Disney. It should have a theme, I think. In fact, Downtown Disney does have a theme. Uh, <laughs> crappy late 90s outdoor mall is its theme. But <laughs> like Tomorrowland in Disneyland, late 90s, early 2000s is not an era that has aged very well. Downtown Disney has not aged very well. And like Tomorrowland in Disney, one way to overcome a poorly themed area, district, land, uh, one that an area that hasn't aged very well, is to go with an era that does age well, that has aged well. Mid-century modern, Palm Sp vintage Palm Springs, 60s and 70s style architecture. And yes, Disney has confirmed this. They've used the term specifically, the words Palm Springs. They're going for a vintage Palm Springs look. There's a Walt Disney connection. Walt used to have a home in Palm Springs. They're making that connection. And I, I am absolutely here for it. That this is, I love that era of modern or that architecture, uh, mid-century modern, sixties and seventies. I love it. I love it in a way that I love. I love vintage Palm Springs the same way that I love Main Street Disneyland. And we talked about this theme in the initial video about the topic when we first got that concept art. Uh, we talked about how uh, maybe if what if they maybe try to connect this theme, this downtown Disney theme, into Tomorrowland. And they made an interesting choice. I think I made this point before. They made an interesting choice in that concept art to drop that monorail in the concept art because that monorail, where does it take you? It takes you right to Tomorrowland. And they've already got, you know, uh, concept art and theming in place. They've already started down that road uh, with the vintage Tomorrowland aesthetic. They didn't get anywhere with it, and that's something that we're going to talk about in a, another video coming up where I talked about why we want a new Tomorrowland. Boy, I'm up on a tangent right now. Uh, but, I mean, just maybe eh, it could happen. Who knows? Time will tell, but we are getting it in the new town down Disney. Let's look at some of that concept art. Here's the proposed new entrance to the new downtown Disney. This is going to replace this. And if so, thank goodness, because that entrance is just plain terrible. As crappy 90s as it gets. The new concept art, I love the new concept art. The color and the planters looks great, and I really love this. This design feature was a major part of the uh, mid-century modern architecture, and you'll see it throughout the new downtown Disney. I'm really looking forward to seeing how much further they take this. Are we going to get more than just this? Are they, are they really going to go for it? In this art, you can also see what may be a new downtown Disney logo? Question mark. Written in Walt's script? Question mark. This is not something that Disney has formally revealed as of yet, so I'm not 100% sure that this is the real thing in the concept art. But I do think that the current Downtown Disney logo also looks terribly 90s and is outdated and can very much use a new facelift. So it's very possible, it's very likely, that that could be the actual new logo for Downtown Disney. One other thing worth noting here in the concept art are the turnstiles. Not sure why these are included here, but uh, or what they could be for. Uh, maybe, though, it's just meant to symbolize bag check without, put, <laughs> without putting something in as drastic and ominous looking and unsexy looking as a bag check in concept art. Here's a look at the guitar pick feature we saw from above in the original concept art. Turns out it's going to be the new stage for live performances. And again, thank goodness, because the current stage that sits in downtown Disney right now 
looks awful. It's like something temporary they might set up in a mall performance by Tiffany. There's more of that design feature I was just talking about. Looks great. Here's another piece of concept art of this stage. Actually, there, I think there's two of these uh, based on the original concept art. Perhaps this is the second one. But you can see here that the stage fronts a, a row of retail shops. Now, it's possible this is a future home of Din Tai Fung, but again, my instinct tells me this is retail. Uh, and I also think they may be trying for a larger space for the new restaurant. Uh, I mean, just based on the size of, of the shops here in this concept art. Now, one thing worth noting is that all of this concept art appears to be focused only on the west end. I think they're only doing this to the west end of downtown Disney so far, but there are still areas in downtown, other areas besides this, that have that sort of late 90s, early 2000 architecture. And I'm talking to you, looking at you specifically, World of Disney. The, the, the facade, the, the exterior of that building is still very 90s. The, the, the marquee, huh, very 90s. Uh, they've already changed. They've already updated the interiors to that, what has now become a kind of a cliche, uh, abandoned, repurposed uh, warehouse type thing which, I mean, it's generic enough that they can make that work for a lot of different ways, generic being the operative word, but not necessarily in a bad way. Uh, but the, the exteriors could still use uh, an update, or in this case, a, a reboot, uh, <laughs> a, 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 a date back to the 70s. So will World of Disney get a reskin? Uh, probably, but not, like I said, not in this. They're probably going to do this in phases. This is a multi-year project. They're going to take care of that uh, West End first, and then they'll work on the world of Disney side of things later. And that could be actually what Potrock was referring to when he was saying that there are more changes to come, more announcements to be made. Okay, next. Apparently, there's a hotel on Disney property called the Paradise Pier Hotel. I've chosen to forget about this hotel because it's not a very good hotel. And by the way, there's also no such place as Paradise Pier, right? Of course, Disney is also aware of this thematic flaw and they are doing something about it. Thank goodness it is going to become Pixar. You know, it's funny, uh, in that same podcast, Ken Potrock said there's no official name yet for this hotel, which seems, <laughs> I, I found that hilarious because I, what else are they going to call it? I mean, the only possible name, if they don't call it the Pixar Pier Hotel, I would be shocked. That's the first thing I thought. I thought when I started, I, I just reflexively started calling it the Pixar Pier Hotel. I thought that was the name. I thought they already did declare, but apparently not yet. They don't have an official name for this hotel. Anyway, here's the concept art of the new hotel lobby. You've got Luxo balancing on top of a Pixar ball with a Pixar-themed mobile hovering over it. And for those curious, I went ahead and identified all of them for you clockwise. From the top, Soul, Finding Nemo, Incredibles, Toy Story, Wally, Monsters, Inc., and Coco. I have very low expectations for this project, and I get the feeling that everybody else does as well. It'll probably be an improvement over the current Paradise Pier Hotel, but certainly nothing like they've already done at the Toy Story themed hotel, for example, in Tokyo. Because, of course they won't. Because <laughs> this looks fantastic and there's no way we're gonna get anything close to this good. I would bet a thousand fresh baked bucks we don't get even a quarter of the depth and theming as this hotel does. But hopefully they improve at least the guest experience because that's really where the problem was. <laughs> The, the problem wasn't the theme of the hotel. The problem was there was terrible food. Uh, the, the, the services were uninspired, I guess. I mean, I don't really hear anybody talking about all the things you could do <laughs> at the Paradise Pier Hotel. And they really couldn't, this is a good one, you couldn't really call this uh, a, a hotel that was on property in the same way that you could say of the Disneyland Hotel or even more so the Grand Californian. That's because they've got this thing a solid half mile or more to the entrance to the park. You've got to walk, you have to turn left, go in through the parking lot of, of the Paradise Prairie Hotel, then make a right through downtown Disney and walk the entire distance of downtown Disney before you can get to the entrance of the theme park. But it sounds like Disney is working on a solution for this problem. At least somewhat, They've, they're building a new entrance just for Paradise Pier Hotel guests. Uh, the, the guests are gonna cross the street, cross Disneyland Drive, and then go into where you, you enter uh, the Grand Californian, you can make a right, travel down a little path, and boom, you're in DCA. They're going to drop you off right next to Goofy Sky School. It's actually a lot like the access that they have right now for the Grand Californian guests who have their own special entrance to the park at uh, Grizzly Peak. It's a great move for Disney because, again, 
That's such a long walk from, from that hotel all the way to the front entrance. Uh, and it also might maybe sort of send a few more guests into DCA in the morning or whenever uh, rather than going as their starting park, rather than going all the way to Disneyland. But <laughs> only if those guests have a reservation starting at DCA can that happen. A reservation that starts in DCA. Uh, reservations. By the way, side note, uh, Botrock did mention reservations again. I get this very strong feeling that reservations are still here to stay for a little while at least. On that topic, stay tuned to Fresh Bake because I'm working on a hacks video that will help make getting reservations a little bit easier for you. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. You know what, actually, and for those of you who, or for those who do start in Disneyland, at least now, and they go to DCA later, you got a shorter walk back to the hotel, I guess, if you're staying at Paradise Pier Hotel. Anyway, again, good move on Disney's part, and so too is restoring Magic Mornings. No specific timetable has been given as of yet when they're going to start doing that, but they are going to start doing it, and thank goodness, because it's the least Disney could do for those guests who are willing to separate themselves from $500 a night or up to stay on property, to stay <laughs> at the Grand Californian Disneyland Hotel or Paradise Bear Hotel. That's the least they could do for you guys. So I'm glad you guys are getting your extra morning uh, on those hotel nights. And then finally, one other feature that they're working out is something called Hey Disney. At least that's what Ken Potter called it. It's basically the same thing as Hey Alexa, uh, except Hey Disney. Hey Disney, can I get some bath towels? Hey Disney, can I get myself a cheeseburger and a Coke? Hey Disney, can you read my kid a bedtime story? Basically that, which is cool. That's neat. That's a fun little uh, special ad that you can get as a hotel guest at the Disneyland Resort. And I think that covers everything, guys. But let me know. Let me know if you have any questions about this, if you're unclear or you know, some confusing parts of this, because there's a lot going on. This is a beefy update. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to try to get an answer for you. Otherwise, follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked, on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. If you like our show and want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash fresh baked. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And fresh baked. <laughs>